Hi, I'm Professor Dent and welcome to week three of Ed 481. Um, for the last couple of weeks, week one, we talked about um, sort of an introduction to emergent bilingual students. Week two, we talked about key issues in um, the teaching of emergent bilinguals and within the area of ESOL. And now on week three, we're going to be talking about reading instruction for emergent bilingual students. Um, <clears throat> this week and next week, we're going to be focusing, focusing on um, effective teaching strategies for ESOL students. I think that they'll continue to come up throughout the course, but um, this week as we focus on reading, um, let's review what it is that needs to be turned in for this week. So it's broken up into two assignments. Um, the reading that you'll need to do for this week, just as a review, that's going to inform all of the responses that you give. And once again, anything that you can pull out of the reading and connect to your answers is going to be um, a strong message that you're reading it and you're getting it and you see how it gets applied. So, and that's really important. I mean, um, it's really important to be able to see how the uh, materials in the book um, actually walk themselves out in class. Um, let's see, what exactly are we reading? We are reading this week um, a selection from the folder um, by Hathaway in 2009 called A Narrow Bridge to Academic Reading. So that's on Moodle and you can get that there. Um, and we're also reading Chapter 4 of Soltero. So, and the name of that chapter is Principles of Effective Teaching and Learning. So those are the two texts that you're going to be using as reference as you move through these, um, through the work for this week. So assignment number one is um, going to be watching a video and responding to what you've seen there. There's an eight minute video of some elementary students, upper elementary, and um, they're teaching reading instruction. And what you will need to do is um, using Soltero, page 113, uh, think about eight different strategies for increasing high expectation for these students that you found in the textbook. And then, um, after watching the video, you should um, come up with two teacher strategies that she used in that video and how, um, she, how she implemented them and also I'd like for you to evaluate how she implemented them, what was the best parts, and what parts maybe could she have done better. So put yourself in the space of um, evaluating other teachers. Make sure that you're positive. Make sure you find good things. We don't want to um, just use the time to be critical, but also to find things that we can adapt into our own classrooms. Um, the second part of the assignment is going to start off with selecting a text. Now, I know that's a really broad request. So in terms of narrowing it down, you might consider a, either a textbook for whatever level you would be teaching. Maybe you're teaching high school and you're in high school teaching math. So you will take a text, um, a chapter or a section from a math book and you're going to break it down. Um, maybe you're teaching sixth grade and so you've got um, a single class and you know that for their science they they're using this book or that book take and select a chapter from that whatever textbook is going to be relevant to the work that you're doing in the classroom um, and that's how you should go about selecting the text and it you know select it by the chapter select it by the section whatever is the teachable amount for what you're going to be doing and once you've selected it um, I want you in your answer to also obviously tell the name of the text, what selection you took from the text, and also what grade you're teaching. So kind of give me a brief bio of the students. That part's not in the um, in the assignment written online, I don't think. So I'll be looking for an, a general understanding of who your students are. That's really important. Um, and then I want you to move into considering what strengths your students will bring into understanding um, that material in that text. So um, a lot of times emergent bilinguals are viewed from a deficit point of view, like, well, what do I have to teach them that I don't already know? You know, so what we're going to do is practice um, finding ways to scaffold the information for them based on what they do know. 
So um, that shouldn't be too hard to do because uh, depending on the age that you're coming in, if you've got kinders or first grade students, um, you're going to have to look at some really organic things that they have gotten from home. Um, and that shouldn't be too difficult. It might be even the same as um, English speakers, English native speakers. So, But as you move up into high school, you're going to start getting more into the interests of those students. And I'm not sure how the, the reading will... Um, help you in that way. So I'm looking to see how the reading might um, contribute into uh, looking and finding those students and their strengths. So once you've identified a text and you've identified the strengths that the students will bring into the class, all of this can be put into a narrative paragraph. But then the next thing that you're going to want to do is um, identify some strategies for how you would teach that material. Um, and when I say strategies, I mean um, very specific techniques. I want to know exactly what activities you might use and what out of that reading you're going to select um, as material to review with the students um, and how, how you'll connect it to what they already know. So, um, and you're going to select at least two strategies for how you would teach the material, the text selection that you have. And um, you're going to be submitting assignments numbers one and two by Sunday. And then the reading group needs to be turned in by Friday. And you'll notice that this is the pattern that we should follow every week. So all of the work turned in by Sunday and the reading group by Friday. And that's so that you have time to respond to other people. Um, and I really appreciated people who have been sending me email messages with confusing situations or I don't, you know, um, it's, it's very helpful to know where you guys need a little support. So do not hesitate to send me emails. I'm very um, eager to get back to you and looking forward to um, supporting you in this online class and making sure that you're successful. That's my goal. So um, thank you for the emails and let's... Keep interacting with each other and good luck with this week's assignment. I hope that you find it to be illuminating and helpful. Bye-bye.